get going. And, of course, the big story of the day or of yesterday, really, was that Harry, uh, Prince Harry, flew in, 11-hour flight from uh, California to see his stricken dad, Charles, of course, battling cancer. We're still reeling with the shock of that. Uh, the king said, yeah, come to Clarence House, where he was in London, uh, he got there uh, and it was all over in 30 minutes. Extraordinary. He hasn't seen his dad for about five, uh, since the coronation. Uh, his dad is now ill. He goes to, there he is, the picture of him going to um, uh, Clarence House. 30 minutes and then uh, immediately it, we thought, oh, this will go on for hours. And then we suddenly see this helicopter leaving. Uh, I think it was Buckingham Palace in the end, because there's, yeah, there it goes, because that's where there's a helipad. So that's Charles and Camilla after 30 minutes with Harry leaving London on their way to Sandringham without Harry. Uh, meanwhile, uh, of course, there's no reunion between him and William. Uh, the frost there the, has certainly not thawed. Uh, and Harry, uh, after this meeting, shuffled off back to a hotel that he's staying yeah, in. Yeah. Well, he's expected to go back today. Yeah, he's apparently flying home. I, I mean, I wonder what went on. So, I'll be a fly on the wall in that conversation. Is it just that they come from a kind of slightly strange family where Papa has his appointments for 30 minutes and speaks to his children, bestows a few words and instructions, and that's it. And it's a very sort of clinical, sterile uh, father-son relationship. Or is this really a prodigal son who the father sort of thinks, I don't want you around. Maybe he just opened his uh, big trap and said something about, oh, well, Meg this and Meg that, and I don't know, oh, don't for, don't forget. ancestral guilt or something. Uh, in there no, I think, I, think, I, think, I think that what's going on here is, is very palpable. Harry is not being forgiven for his outrageous behaviour over the past turbulent three years. Uh, you know, uh, right, uh, that interview uh, with Oprah Winfrey calling uh, the King and Kate and uh, the rest of the royal family racist, Britain racist. Oh. All these grenades they've been lobbing across the channel. And then, of course, his nasty little book, Spare, which was right. outrageous, calling Camilla the villain of the story. Right, exactly. Can you imagine Camilla sitting there by Charles' bedside, Harry walking and being like... Hi there. Yeah. I mean, what's she going to say? Oh, yeah, great. Can't wait to sit down and have a nice cup of tea with you. Um, it is sad. I mean, let's see how everything else transpires from now on. But, of course, Harry is now homeless when he comes to the UK because he's been evicted from Frogmore Cottage. Yeah. Um, so... And they didn't... Uh, I mean, you might have thought they might have provided him with some accommodation, but, no, he had to find his own hotel. Uh, we won't say where it is, but we've got a very good idea. And, uh, from what I hear, he's expected to fly back today. Meanwhile, of course, while the... King did agree to see him for that very, very surprisingly brief amount of time. Quite why uh, all the royal commentators go, oh, great, it's thawing, yes, father and son reunion. Pretty pathetic reunion, if you ask me. Meanwhile, William is having none of it. He's furious still and will not see Harry while he mm -hmm. is here. This is extraordinary. Oh, well, you know, I, that is less extraordinary to me. There's one thing about a father forgiving his son because, you know, that is his son after all. But William, well, I, don't I can think imagine he William can't even bear the sight of his Absolutely. younger brother. Absolutely. I mean, how, everything that he said, all the sort of toxic filth he's poured all over the royal family, no that William has to stay stum, has to be stoic, cannot respond, needs to defend his wife, who is, of course, recovering from extremely serious abdominal surgery, now is thrown into having to carry out royal duties. He's at an investiture in Windsor today, which is essentially sort yeah, of yeah, he's back lobbing on duty. out the yeah. um, royal uh, awards and gems, the acronyms, yeah. and then he's got a dinner for London Air Ambulance uh, this evening. I think they, those were two particular events mm. that his mm. father was going to yes, do. Yes, exactly. And so, yeah, he doesn't have time to see his whiny little brother, but why would he want to? The amount of poison that guy has thrown into the well and then just, you know, scuttles back off to California. Air Miles Harry. I mean, what Air sort Miles of... Harry? Like, 22-hour 22, 22 round trip on some sort of private jet, probably, for a half-hour chat. I mean, uh, you could have just phoned, couldn't you? Meanwhile, um, meanwhile his, dad, his dad is saving the planet one helicopter journey at a time. Uh, though the royals don't exactly do much uh, in terms of the environment but I don't care about that. You, you get on your helicopters, you get on your planes. I have no problem with that. But I think what this scenario is revealing is the royal family in total, all of them, have not forgiven Harry uh, and it's going to take a long time for them to, to do that. And if you think back over the way he's behaved over the past three years, can you blame them? Now, Absolutely. Uh, as you said, that his dad, King Charles, still loves his son, of course. And by the way, 
I do think Harry did the right thing. Good for him for dropping everything and flying to see his dad. But his dad, uh, bolstered, no doubt, by his still furious wife, who was called the villain of the story in Spare, Harry's book, uh, didn't have much time I mean, for him and, and William's got no time was for Was there anybody in Spare that was actually spared from Harry's spite? That's what I want to know. He seems to throw poison arrows at absolutely everybody he was related to. What is wrong with your man? Exactly right. Now, uh, as you just uh, alluded to, Alex, uh, uh, William has resumed his royal duties today while... King Charles is going to spend, we understand, at least two months out of action, maybe mm. more. Uh, and uh, so there are a lot of speculation about the tremendous burden on William now. And of course, this was supposed to be a time where he'd, in, he'd, he'd announced that he would be ste stepping back from frontline duties to look after Kate and the kids, because of Kate, as you say, is recovering mm. from serious surgery. She won't be back in action until... Easter, uh, but instead of looking after his wife and family, he's got to work yeah. his backside off, stepping in for his dad. It's the only job I'd imagine in the whole world where instead of getting compassionate leave, you're told to roll your sleeves up, do even more work, get a promotion you didn't ask for, and have to do it all in the glare of the public eye while concealing your true emotions. So uh, spare a thought for William. I mean, everyone thinks, oh, he's a prince, he lives in castles, he's got a blessed life. Rather him than me is all I can say. Uh, yeah, it's an unusual life. Uh, they don't choose it. Uh, it is uh, imposed upon them, uh, but they all have a great sense of duty and uh, they carry out their duties with distinction, apart from Harry and, of course, Prince Andrew, who's not allowed to <laughs> for technical reasons. Now, <laughs> technical. let's move on. Uh,